transfer specialist and is currently fascinated by arts and science. She's working towards achieving a Bachelor of Science degree. Welcome, Shauna. postmortem care. Um, how I learned that doing things with maybe a little less fear can sometimes set you on the best path towards your future. I worked as what's called a body removal or transfer specialist, um, who is a person who aids in the safe, courteous, respectful handling of human remains, and I worked with funeral homes and the Calgary Medical Examiner's Office all across southern Alberta. We removed decedents from every single type of a situation you can imagine. Um, we were there for natural passings, suspicious deaths, fatally violent crime, and everything in between. In a very, very short time frame, I learned that nothing was how I thought it would be. Uh, like most people probably, modern media led me to a lot of misconceptions about body removal, uh, that there would be big, ominous black bags People <laughs> moving glasses, looking wistfully into the distance. <laughs> what little interaction I had with families was going to have to be very stern-faced and cold. I was overjoyed to learn otherwise. 20 seconds is a lot longer than I when someone passes expectedly, uh, whether from old age, prolonged, or chronic illness, transfer specialists are often the first face that people see in response, uh, sorry, in relation to the funeral home immediately after that passing. Um, where am I? They're there to help. We're there to provide information, answer questions, as well as removing the body and taking it into the care of the funeral home. Um, we shroud the body in a white linen sheet, no scary black bag. Um, they're transferred and secured onto a stretcher, and uh, an additional thick cover is put over them so you don't quite see the shape so much. And uh, we carry the stretcher out of the home because there's a lot of sharp corners and stairs and nasty, ugly things that stairs, I mean, sorry, that wheels don't like to roll over. Um, suspicious or unexpected deaths, however, where Calgary Police and other emergency services are involved are a little different. A medical examiner or a medical investigator handles most of the interactions with the family, um, and the body personnel are only there to assist the medical investigator by handling the decedent so that they can get whatever evidence they need. Um, often, but not always, the family will be able to view the body. Uh, this is made a little easier for them by covering the body bag and uh, putting a pillow underneath the decedent's head so that it looks a little bit more natural. Um, Losing my place. That is me. Uh, the white body bag is used under the circumstance to preserve evidence and to prevent <coughs> evidence from being contaminated during the investigation. Um, the viewings of the body are generally supervised by the medical examiner to um, prevent that contamination, and uh, the viewing is up to the discretion of the medical examiner themselves. Oh my goodness, I'm running out of time. Uh, <laughs> the job is extremely demanding. More often than not, transfer specialists are on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, thusly, we sacrifice things like family gatherings, meetings with friends, and uh, any fun things that we might want to do at the drop of a hat, but it's all in love for these people and their families. Um, I felt, personally, that uh, there was a lot of purpose in helping these families with the loss of a loved one. I felt that if I did my job well, I could help make this drawing transition maybe go by a little bit smoother. And hearing some of the stories of these people was often the best part of my day. There were also many dangers involved in my duties that uh, were a little terrifying. And unfortunately, I'm not talking about uh, ghosts or anything supernatural. 
uh, one of my worst fears at the time was, um, how did I break this? <laughs> Infectious diseases, uh, things like tuberculosis, hepatitis C, and HIV AIDS, all of which I encountered abundantly, some more frequently than others. My first real frightening encounter with this was at a medical examiner's case where there was a substantial amount of blood around and many, many sharp objects surrounding the body. This person also had been HIV positive in their lifetime. It wasn't until that very moment that I had properly started to weigh the hazards of my newly acquired career path, and I got very scared. <laughs> Even though I had donned all of the personal protective equipment, the very attractive protective equipment, <laughs> um, I was still overcome with this fear. Uh, my coworker and I completed the job safely. We got out of there and nobody got hurt, but I was still heightened. I couldn't let it go. Um, hours afterwards, I was still considering the choice I had made and whether or not I should let fear win and quit. I eventually talked to my boss about my concerns, who had a lot of supportive and reassuring things to say. He gave me lots of information about these specific pathogens and how they behaved without a host. That information calmed me down a lot, and I became a little less afraid. I decided to stay, and it was one of the best decisions that I could have made. My time as a transfer specialist allowed me to discover a passion for anatomy and forensics, learning how and why bodies <coughs> behave in certain ways under specific circumstances, and opened my eyes to career paths that I never would have thought of previously. People like medical examiners, lab technicians, and embalmers who are all very important but not very often talked about. Where are we? <laughs> as a makeup and practical effects artist in my spare time, I had an added bonus of the opportunity to get to see things that not a lot of people did. There it is. Um, my time during that job gave me a lot of visual reference if I were to ever have to recreate realistic wounds or decomposition or anything else that I might have seen in that time. Um, above all, I gained a lot of new perspectives on life. I learned about grief. I learned a lot of various beautiful philosophies about death, dying, and the afterlife from around the world. I learned all about myself along the way as well. While eventually I did have to leave due to the intense demands of the job, particularly being on call so much, I was inspired to go back to school, study all of these things that I had so quickly fallen in love with. I hope today that I could have helped at least one of you consider living with a little less fear, and that you keep your eye out for any weird and scary opportunities that come your way, because you never know. Thanks.